Hello there everybody and welcome back once again to the Swansea City Adventures. Today we're looking at our sixth season in charge. This is the halfway point for where the save is currently and we're just starting to make our mark on Europe. We're becoming one of the major players and all that time and work and effort we've put in so far is really starting to pay off. So. Without further ado, we're going to jump straight into it and take a look at our season's friendly games. Well, as you can see, we start off here with a win over Leverkusen. Follow that up, a nice win away to Utrecht. So, a couple of big results to start us off with, a couple of nice, you know, nice clean sheets. Then we concede in our next two games, but six ones over Carlisle and Southampton away from home. Yeah, that's very good. Really pleased with that. Then Aris, 7-0. Great result before coming and beating Athletic Bilbao, 4-1 away from home. So, in total, that's a very, very good pre-season and I'm very happy with it. So, we're off to a great start. We're off to a great start. Then we move on to the Community Shield. Well, we faced off against Norwich in this game. And 2-0 uh, winners. Again, we're getting off to a good start. The squad is fit. It's raring to go. And it's showing me now we've got good depth. Because in the friendlies, you know, we played our reserves, our under-18s, as well as some of the first team players who needed match fitness. This game was more about the reserves um, than the first team. It was a mix of both, but quite a lot of my bench players, rotational players, came in for this game. And you know, we got the job done. And it was a, a comfortable, nice, easy win. So, really quite pleased with that in, in total. From there, we're going to take a quick look at the Capital One Cup. As you can see, some big games in this fourth round. Everton United, Man City Villa, um, ourselves and Chelsea, and of course North London Derby, Tottenham Arsenal. But Arsenal were not to get their revenge over us for putting them out of the Capital One Cup in previous years. Instead, Tottenham take the win. We narrowly overcame them in the semi, uh, in the quarterfinal. Sorry, two all on the day. Went to penalties. We took home the win which is important then we absolutely smashed Brighton 7-1 you know put a few more of my first team players in and uh, we got what needed to be done there we got what needed to be done and then in the final we met Man United they'd overcome Everton 2-0 Man City 2-0 and they'd needed penalties as well to get past Watford you know in the semi-finals one all but penalties for United. On the day in the final, we picked up another trophy. It's a 3 1 win, a very good performance. And, uh, you know, delighted again to be winning the Capital One Cup. So, a very good season building there with an excellent pre season, good community shield, and a good Capital One Cup. So, as you can see, this is the breakdown of our Capital One Cup. And, you know, the big win over Ipswich at home, Chelsea at home, the away game, a little sketchy against Tottenham, then at home to Brighton, we win 3-1, 4-0 away, so it's really nice, and of course that win in the final. But a really nice sort of setup there. And then... We finish off the domestic stuff, we'll take a look at the league. A phenomenal season. Now QPR, Burnley and Cardiff going down. Very unfortunate for Cardiff. Just one point away from staying up. A few goals down as well, so they would have needed an extra two points. Uh, you know, converting one of those five wins, uh, five losses. Uh, converting one of those five draws, I mean to say, into a win. Would have been enough to see them through, but not to be for Cardiff we can see though Everton and Villa down the bottom so not having the best of times there we move up the table 
you know, Liverpool, West Brom, Newcastle, and then the big boys, Man City, Man United there, having a nice little tussle, but they've fallen from the top. Chelsea and Arsenal, you know, they're fighting their way out. But the standout team, apart from ourselves as Tottenham, we had a phenomenal season. As you can see, 30 wins, 6 draws, only 2 losses. It was a wonderful campaign for us. Um, 82 goal difference, 96 points. You know, really, really pleased. But we only won the league by 9 points. As good as we were, Tottenham pushed us all the way. And, you know, that's really impressive considering that we have bought Gareth Bale off them last season. So, they stepped up to the plate, 28-3-7. and seven. It was that 7 which really cost them the league. But a good defence, not quite as good a goal scoring team as myself. You know, the goal difference is heavily weighted in my favour. But all in all, a really competitive side in the league. And uh, yeah, it was nice to see. It was really nice to see. So, on to the league fixtures. As you can see, not the best of starts for us. We win the opening day against QPR, but draw against West Brom and a loss to Man City away from home. Again, it's the away form that's just dragging us back a little bit here. So, that's definitely something which needed looking at. Um, another home win, you know, Reading. Away to Wolves, we only picked up a draw, so a little of a slow start here. Two wins, two draws and a loss from the opening five but things started picking up after that couple of wins Stoke and then a first away win of the season coming in uh, late October away to Norwich good 3-0 win there a draw against Chelsea is a decent result and then you know we beat Tottenham we beat Villa Everton away United Southampton away and Burnley Six on the trot, that's put us totally in control. I think we were second at this point. We were just hunting down Tottenham. Maybe a point behind, I think. Um, so, we were really doing well. And of the nine points that Tottenham were behind us, we'd beaten them twice. So, you know, if it had gone the other way and they'd beaten us twice, they would have got the title. So, it was key to win these sort of duels against the top teams, making sure we're taking home at least four points from the two ties, if not six. Um, as you can see though, that's a great run. Two all away to Newcastle, that's not a bad result. We beat Cardiff, we went away then, Watford and Arsenal picking up results. Our first home draw, I believe, of the season, West Brom, 0-0, the first game we hadn't scored in all season. But, you know, it's the first day of the new year, and we had to improve our game. So, the following run was really pleasing. Away to QPR, away to Liverpool, home Man City, away to Reading and Stoke, at home to Wolves and Liverpool, including a huge win there, 8-1. Um, at home to Norwich, away to Tottenham, completing the double. Then away to Villa, home to Chelsea and Everton, and finally a home game against Southampton. Now, we beat a couple of big teams there. We've gone on a fantastic run. It's 13 wins in a row. So, that's quite fantastic. Unbeaten in the league since game three, I believe it was. So, we're really starting to rack up some real form here. The title wasn't quite done yet, but we were right on the brink. Now, unfortunately, you know, Old Trafford's still a really tough place to go. We picked up our second loss of the season. You know, then our final draw of the season, away to Burnley. And at this point, I knew that if we won at home, we'd be crown champions. So, Newcastle was the game. We stepped up to the plate and we won that. So 4-3 there, we're champions. 
all the pressures off, away to Cardiff, played a couple of reserves. They stepped up and did the job for us. Yeah, we got a 1-0 win over there, our big rivals. Then Watford 6-1. You know, those youngsters really making a case that they should be in the first team. And another win over Arsenal. So, you know, home and away against Arsenal, Tottenham. And I believe as well, four points off quite a few of the other top teams. Like Chelsea and Liverpool and Newcastle, I know. Um, I think we lost to Man United. And Man City, so not really that bad a season. We did quite well. We did have to leave it late to win the title because of Tottenham's great form, as we've already spoken on. But a really good campaign, all things considered. Then we'll have a look at the Super Cup. It was early on in the season, but this is where we begin our European roundup. A huge win over Olympic Marseille, 6 1. So again, a mix of first team, bench and youngsters. And uh, they came in, they did their jobs well, and they got the big one. So there's really not much more I could have asked. That was a good performance, a great win and another trophy. Then we'll have a look at the Champions League. As you can see, it's been a good year. We've put up Bayern Munich in the knockout round. Olympic Marseille again fell victim to us in the quarterfinals this time. Then we got drawn with Barcelona who were in rampant form. You know, 6-0 over PSV, 7-1 over Schalke. We go through 4-2, that wasn't a bad result. And we meet Arsenal. We've been meeting them a couple of times lately. In the last couple of seasons in cup competitions. So, they made the final overcoming Olympic Lyon. Then Man City, followed by a very close tie over Man United. And they ran us close in the final. A late goal from us, a header from centre-back Phil Jones in the 80... I want to say 87th minute. It was around that time period, so a really late game winner from uh, Phil Jones. But we won the Champions League, and that's all that matters. So as you can see, we start off with our groups... We beat Partizan, beat PSV away, and then beat Fenerbahce. So, that's quite a decent opener. You know, the first three games, not conceding. We're scoring eight goals. That's pretty good. Then, away to Fenerbahce, a 4-1 win. You know, I'll take that any day. It was the only goal we did concede in the group. We went and sealed things up over Partizan with a 3-0. And then at home with PSV, again, the youngsters came in. And for some reason, morale was high. Uh, PSV were tired, but we went out, we got the job done, and we absolutely decimated them. Our home form was starting to become a thing of, you know, a real strength for the side and something that was important for us to capitalise on. Then, Bayern Munich, we went to... Uh, Went out to Germany. A 2-1 win away from home is a great result. 3-1 at home just sealed the deal for us. Then Marseille. You know, we did them in quite spectacular fashion for that uh, Super Cup win. We did them again in the home leg. I decided for the away. We'd rest a few people. You know, bring through some of those youngsters as well. See if they could step up against a good European side. And away from home, a 2-1 loss. There was quite a lot of youngsters in there. I think my left back was 15 or 16. My striker was 16. Um, I think I had my 15-year-old goalkeeper. So When I talk about youth, I mean real youth. And uh, we came close. We came close. Now, we kept it tight. We got an away goal. So... You know, I think Marseille would have had to have scored seven past us. We lost 2-1, but it was a good performance and a great indicator of how good this talent could be going forward. And then again, relying on the home form, 3-1 over Barcelona. Again, we decided to rest a few people. Not as many this time, but a couple more youngsters and reserves coming into the side. A few different people. 
and we went and got a one all draw at the new camp so again a fantastic performance we got through and as i say that late winner in the final so a champions league was ours once again gotta love that and then finally to round things up we head over to the fifa club world cup as you can see in one semi-final it was Gambor Osaka and Fluminense the Japanese team succumbing to a 3-1 defeat at the hands of the Brazilians as was expected so no big surprise in that one and then I believe Club African are a Tunisian side and you know we swept them 6-0 again putting my reserves out I felt they'd be strong enough to get the job done than they were and then we moved on to the final Fluminense not an easy side so the first team came back out Brazilian sides always get into the final of this uh, competition and really make you work for it so it was pleasing to get a 2-1 win and get our hands on the club world cup so the last thing we're going to look at now is going to be the transfers for the season nothing too exciting coming in we had a young striker from Barcelona Julio Perez that's 1.2 million Martin from Real Madrid for 4.2 that's another young striker and then the big signing for the season was Marco Panetta my Italian right back 17 and a half million pounds uh, he was 18 he wasn't getting in the side as you can see a very very good player so we decided to cash in on him a little later on um, well at the end of uh, at the end of the current season I just finished actually the, the 12th season so 6 years at the club and you know that fee proved to be a steal uh, as well as that we've got a couple of interesting players here Blair and Berger a couple of strikers who go on to do well for other clubs Truck and Broad good attacking midfielder and uh, I think that's really it for the free transfers we we spent £6 million on Southampton striker Nicky Borden he was only 15 but a really good prospect turned out quite well scored a lot of goals on loan to other clubs he hasn't made it into our team but we'll make a profit on that Fernando Di Gregorio he was my backup keeper he's become my first team goalkeeper now a steal again, Roma getting done by us, that becomes a pattern. They're producing some top, top talent and we're just going in and just taking it all. And uh, Milosi, a good left winger, backup for Gareth Bale. Didn't really pan out, but the fee was right. So £39 million pounds spent. You know, that's quite a decent deal. We jump over to the transfers out for the season. And there's quite a lot of youngsters and reserves at this point going out for decent fees. So we've got Joe Egan and Will McAllister, two good transfers out there for a decent fee. Mika Richards, you know, Liverpool wanted him. I didn't. It's a huge fee, I had to let that happen. But Adiso leaves our first team, 24 million there. Um, a couple of more youngsters, Andy Rexa. And uh, Charlobos Sukas heads up for a huge fee to Dortmund. My backup right back. He was on the bench. A very good player, but not good enough to sort of establish himself as a first team player. So 28 million is a huge amount of money to get for him. And then uh, Howell didn't make it for us. Nice midfielder, but 6.5 million is a good fee. We'll just move that up a little. And look at Weber. 5 million there 10 million for Jan Weissenfels small much then for Ochoa and Castro and Darren Leg would come through our academy 4 million for him a ton of loan deals as always we've got so many youngsters and reserves so we're making a little bit of money off the loan deals not much but in total 121 million so again you're looking at about 82 I believe profit on transfers for the season 
you look at agent fees in that as well and we're probably let me think we're probably going to be in the ballpark of 70 million yeah maybe 65 to 70 million pounds pure profit on transfers so that wasn't too bad for us in all but again it's been a really successful season we've had some great transfers in and out we've won the club world cup we've defended our champions league racked up another league title and you know really outperformed in general the one downside being the fa cup again not being able to get the job done unfortunately but you know we were on a good run unfortunately tottenham you know as i say they were on they were on fire for most of the season unlucky not to pick up more but now they did put us out of the fa cup and they went on of course to beat man united extra time in that final so they did get some reward for their phenomenal play but that was a competition that kept on eluding us and it was something we're going to have to do something about but that rounds us up for the 2017-18 season it is the sixth season of the save so join me once again as we take a look through seasons 7 to 12 which are coming soon in our Swansea City adventure I'm Chris Ormy and as always guys take care and hope to see you again soon